Good morning and welcome to the Salvation Army at Wickford on this Sunday the 7th of August in the year 2022. I'm so pleased that you could spend some time with us this morning. We are going to do things a little bit differently this week and next week. We're going to be focusing our thoughts on two songs in particular. In our living, in our dying, all must be well, says the song we are considering today. They are positive words, especially in an age of pandemic. And they're words that we owe our thanks to two ladies for coming up with a summary of God's providential care for us and for every part of his creation. But sadly today, whilst many look for hope, they cut our God of hope out of the equation. This means they will never find what they are looking for. The best example I can give for this is what occurs when Bible, thing, when, when Bible themes are expounded in the media or portrayed through the arts, and it's done in such a way that the spiritual truths behind the stories are completely separated from them. So, for example, the musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, so far as I can recall, does not even come close to mentioning God. Yet the climax of the Bible story comes when Joseph's father, Jacob, dies and his brothers begin to worry about their safety under their brother, who is also now their Egyptian overlord. Joseph calms them by simply saying, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You can read that verse in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Leaving this revelation out of the story of Joseph undermines the lessons that can be learned from the story. This faith in the purposes of God, this faith in God's providential care, continues to be seen throughout the New Testament. And this very verse from Genesis is echoed in Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So the first lady I wish to consider is Julian of Norwich. She was born around the year 1342 and grew up as a child through the European pandemic, referred to as history as the Black Death. At that time, it is estimated that in England, around a third of the population died. However, Julian lived through it until about the year 1430. And during this time, she also lived um, throughout the Hundred Years' War between England and France. In May 1373, she was stricken by a serious illness and seemed to be dying. A priest was brought to her bedside because of her imminent death and he showed her Jesus, the crucified one. Julian's health recovered, and later she testified that she had received 16, 1, 6, 16 revelations from God. She wrote these down and commented on them in her book called Revelations of Divine Love. Her book is the earliest surviving book in the English language to be written by a woman. It is a message of optimism, based on the certainty of being loved by God and being protected by his providence. Inspired by divine love, a love which radically she compared to motherly love. Inspired by this love, she decided to live as a recluse in a cell near to the church named after St Julian in the city of Norwich. She developed a wisdom to help people who called on her. She became a counsellor to many. She helped so many going through difficult times. And the much quoted optimistic message of this lady, known as Julian of Norwich, this message which she attributed to receiving from Jesus is simply this. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. The second lady I want to talk to you about had a much shorter life than Julian of Norwich. Mary Bowley was born in Sirencester in the year 1813, the sixth of seven children. Her father was a Quaker and a draper. In the Victorian period, 
Mary was known as the author of an ambitious seven volume work called The World's History from the Creation to the Ascension of Queen Victoria. The subtitle of the books was Universal History in Scriptural Principles. And throughout the work, she sought to show that God's hand had been in the events of history. Perhaps you can hear something of the quotes that I've given you from Joseph and from St Paul in this idea that God's hand is in the events of history. Most of Mary's hymns were written before she was 30 years old and some were published by the Plymouth Brethren in 1842. But in 1847, in a book called Hymns Intended to Help the Communion of Saints, no less than 58 of her hymns were included. She married quite late in life. Her husband was the Reverend John McWilliam Peters. He had once been Anglican vicar of Langford in Berkshire and Quennington in Gloucestershire. But then he felt the need to leave the Church of England and build a non-denominational chapel in order to preach the gospel in the village of Little Farringdon. They were married by George Muller, one of the founding fathers of the Plymouth Brethren, married in 1852, but sadly Mary only lived for another four years after that. Today she is remembered for her optimistic hymn, which has the same message as Julian of Norwich gave us. Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. Isn't that encouraging? Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. This does not mean that all will be well in a material sense, but by God's grace, everything will indeed be well. As Paul says, Romans 8, 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We're going to be listening to the hymn in a moment, but notice the way that the poet builds on confidence through each verse, changing the tense as she goes. She starts off saying in each verse, all will be well. Then she proclaims, all, all is well. And then she emphasises, all must be well. The words have become inseparable from the Welsh tune, which we know in English as All Through the Night, first published for the Welsh harp in 1784. If you know Jesus, I hope you know the truth that all will be well. May God bless you. 